we said that inshallah ta'ala um, what we are looking forward to do the coming days <coughs> sorry, is to cover some hadith and to mention each hadith uh, in a process of uh, articulating and trying to get as much lessons from that hadith as much as we can. Why I'm saying that? And why we are doing that? Again, to remind you, our deen is upon two sources. Actually, it is one source, but in two levels. The first one is Al Quran. So we don't have any problem, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin, with that problem. We know it is, um, it's been, been reserved to us all this time, and we call this mutawatir. The way it reached us, we call this way is mutawatir. The meaning of mutawatir, actually, before the meaning, the outcome of knowing that Al-Quran is mutawatir, the knowledge, information is under the classification of mutawatir means that is infallible. That we don't have any doubt about it. As a source, we reserve to us the wording of Al Quran, we reserved all these centuries, means that it is infallible. The meaning, now the meaning as something practical, you know, practical meaning of, of that, that we can rely upon the verses of our Quran. Okay, so those verses of our Quran, they are reliable because we are very sure, we are, we believe that we don't have anything wrong coming out from this source. So the first source is Al-Qur'an. Okay, now the verses of Al-Qur'an, it is in two categories. Two categories, I need to remind you about this every single time, actually. Just to be rooted in your mind and to recall it every time we are treating Qur'an, some verses of Al-Qur'an and some hadith. Sound hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Again, those verses which are infallible because they are mutawatir. Okay, the meaning of mutawatir, it is a way of transmitting generation. So this mutawatir means that many people pass it to another group, to another group that we can't even count. So the information being passed to us by those groups, okay? Every single generation, we have large group which narrate the same thing again and again. This is how our Quran reached us. So depending on that, way we know this is again the outcome of this knowledge that Al-Quran being reserved and preserved to us. So we don't have any doubt about the verses of the Quran that it's being revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no doubts there. Okay, those verses which are all infallible are in two categories. The first one, which is clear. The meaning of being clear that if two persons read the same verse, they understand, they will understand the same and the exact information. There will be no way no space for any kind of disagreement. خلاص. Finished. One minute. Okay? The 
the example of these, the verse which is very well known one, no? the chapter of Ikhlas, which is Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allah is one and there is no second. Khalas, he is the one. Any other verses under the same category will give the same information. Alhamdulillah, most the verses of our Quran under this category. When it comes to believe those verses in this category, they are clear enough. So now we have two information about those verses. In front of it and in definite. And again, definite. Definite in meaning. So we don't have any kind of disagreement there. Most of our, not most, all of the verses which speaks about belief under this category. So no doubts to Muslims when they say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, anything related to this belief is infallible and definite. Again, most of our Quran in this category. Most of the verses of our Quran in this category. Okay, what about the rest of the verses? The rest which some people will say in English, it is uh, ambiguous. What is the meaning of ambiguous? That means not clear enough. The outcome that when we read those verses, we know the first fact, they are infallible. But the second thing, that we may read those verses, the very same verses, and come out by different understanding. Not to say in contrast, not to say contradict understanding, but to say different understanding. This different understanding should not reach, should not be again con in contradiction. Like what? The fiqh verses. Those verses which speaks about fiqh issue. So unclear, which is ambiguous. And those unclear verses, different meanings. Those different meanings doesn't say that they should be again in contradiction, that they both contradict each other. Sorry for that. Okay. Again, in this, we have only almost one third of Al Quran just in this category. The meaning two thirds in this category. The clear one, which we all agree upon. So, why should we have any kind of dispute between Muslims? Where we don't have much space really to disagree upon. You see, in principle. Okay. Now, those verses, how can we understand them perfectly? We need something practical, which is the example of the Prophet, Muhammad, <laughs> Why should we need Muhammad, <laughs> Because he is the human translation of a Quran, practical way. This is why Aisha said that 
Muhammad is Al Quran walking on two feet. And again, she said in different times, she said in different occasions that وَكَانَ خُلُقِهُ Quran. So any merit in Islam, if you want to see it, it should be in Muhammad sallallahu So if we want to understand the Quran perfectly, we must, it is a must, we must follow Muhammad sallallahu no other way. And in this case, we say comfortably that the Prophet Sunnah, which is the way of life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, it is the other source for revelation in Islam. The other source of revelation in Islam. So if I want to be Muslim, Again, if I want to be a Muslim, in this case, I can't be perfect Muslim. I can't be even a Muslim if I'm not following Al-Quran and the Sound Sunnah. And now I put this condition in advance, Sound Sunnah. Why I put this in advance? We said when it comes to Al-Quran, it is infallible. It be reserved. Um, Sure, I believe that it never been touched by human being. Not to be played with by human being. But when it comes to Sunnah, we don't have the same thing. Now this Sunnah, how it reached us? How did it reach us? We have this. which we call transmission. So this is very important introduction if we want to know how to treat our sunnah, how to treat any text coming out from the Prophet Muhammad First, we have to ask, did the Prophet say it? This is I think not only one million <laughs> dollar question, <laughs> it is your life, your deen question. Al Imam Muhammad al Musirin, he said, when it comes to narration of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he said, this science, and he been related to the science of hadith, is your deen. So you watch out from where you are getting it. Very important. So the first question should be, did the Prophet say that? So how do I figure this out? We have the science of hadith. Again, this science of hadith it is about transmission. Only? No. Transmission, it is the solid root for it. But the other thing is to articulate, to think about it, and to see that kind of knowledge if it goes with Al-Qur'an. So we have every time, we have, we must offer any knowledge related to the Prophet after we are really sure that the transmission is right, now the information itself. We have to offer this information to the Qur'an. So if it goes with Al-Qur'an, in harmony with Al-Qur'an, so now we are sure that it is a piece of our deen, part of our deen. But if it is not, although the transmission telling me that it being related in a proper way, yet 
we have something there, some text there to say, and it be related to the prophet. Although, about this sound transmission, that there is something wrong, something fishy. That to tell me that the prophet never said it. Why? Because any information coming out related to the prophet should be in harmony with the Quran. There should not, there should not be any kind of contradiction between the two sources of Islam. This is important. So this transmission, again, it is, it depends upon narrators. It is again chains. Those chains, just like a necklace, okay? Those chains should be connected. If we have any cut there, that means we should not even look at it. Halas. We dump it. It is not a piece of our deen. Why should I carry it? It is not my deen. I carry it as long as it is a part of our deen. Give you an example. Yesterday I've been reading, and it's been very shocking. I've been raised upon this hadith that al hikmatu dalatul mu'min that wisdom is something that you have to look for as a meaning it is a very beautiful meaning i love it in yes and it is all the time being sing, you know sang in nasheed you know, and uh, I remember a very important program. It was about build upon, upon this. Al Hikmat Ballatul Mu'min. Okay, and I love it because it is very well known hadith. Very well known. Yesterday I've been reading. Uh, Alhamdulillah, now it, I, I took it as a, a way of life. Not to narrate any hadith whatsoever. Although I've been really very sure about it, I've been raised upon it. I have to check it first. I have to double check again. Mm -hmm. So I've done this yesterday. And the classification of this is very weak. Mm -hmm. Very weak. Mm -hmm. So when you say very weak, it is almost fabricated. That means it is not reliable. That means it is not part of our deen. Yet, the information came from some place, some other place. You know, we know it. Because the Prophet has been, Alhamdulillah, I mean, he's been very wise. Okay? But, to be honest with our deen, we say that this hadith, this exact text, not being said by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Although I love the meaning. Yeah, but it's like from the culture, isn't it? So in this case, the first thing I say, this hadith is not part of our sunnah. Yet, as a text. But this is to follow wisdom. Being proven by different hadith. So I don't need this hadith. Although I love it, I don't need to say that the Prophet said it why he didn't. To strengthen my deen. You see, where is the problem? Some people may rely upon those weak hadith to say, I don't have a problem with that because the meaning is good. So I can add it to my deen. It is exactly to say that my deen has a shortage. And I want to fill the gap. And this is not proper thing to do. Our deen is perfect. So if we have any kind of shortage, it is not in our deen. It is in our <coughs> research. It is in our reading. It is in our understanding. So you go and you read more. 
and you will find out that wisdom lies in Islam. From where? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his Quran described a sunnah to be al-hikmah. And to say that wisdom being revealed in the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi So I don't need extra piece of information which is very weak to say that wisdom is a very important thing in Islam because it is there already, it is there, but in a sound way, in an infallible way. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Yes. Is, is the dua, Allahumma zidni ilm, this is Quran, or this is, uh, I know I hear this a lot, zidni ilm, uh, give me knowledge, or lead me to knowledge. This is Quran, I'm trying to remember oh, if it's Quran. Uh, we have this verse again, which mm -hmm. being related to Musa alayhi salatu mm -hmm. salam saying, it being mentioned in the Quran. When Musa alayhi salatu was was in his way to Faroos, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him ayn. So this dua of Musa alayhi salatu was actually it is our dua in every single lesson. When Musa alayhi salatu was said Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad when he asked Allah to not to keep his tongue tied while he is telling Allah's verses and the beginning of this dua when we say Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma allamtana that we know no knowledge, but the knowledge which you revealed upon us, which you told us. Okay? The glory is all to you. Okay? And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us knowledge and to be able to pass knowledge, but because it is not enough to know. The most important of Islam in Islam is to pass the right information. And the very perfect manner and the very perfect understanding. May Allah inshallah help us in this inshallah. So again we have this transmission, we have narrators to pass the information. Again we have many conditions set by ulama upon this to make sure that this being related to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi now the outcome of this to say after all you know fulfilling all those conditions it is to come out with results which is, which are the classification of hadith okay and we have different classification of hadith which is not the subject matter and we can't really go in details because it is very much academic okay but i think again after finishing this process Okay, and reach the classification that this hadith is sahih, sahih al isnat, uh, hasan, hasan li ghayrihi. So we have many classification. The thing here, what is the outcome of knowing that we have many classifications? That you need to go in depth in the science of hadith to understand those classifications are ah, now the big question i'm not academic i'm not working in the sense of hadith so the minute i read any hadith what can i do especially when someone will say that it is sahih or is not they won't market any hadith you know when it comes to marketing hadith as long as it suits some understanding to some groups, that they won't say to you the classification. Sometimes they just, you know, turn blind eyes upon it. Sometimes. Sometimes they will bring in some sound hadith, half of it, and forget about the second half, which may really 
in most um, situations add very different understanding from the understanding that we marketing to you. Okay? Sometimes they bring in some hadith and they say Sahih al Bukhari. Okay. We knew from the last time that Al Bukhari he, he has a methodology. And he didn't say that every single hadith is fulfilling my conditions to be Sahih. The highest way of Sahih, Sahih Bukhari. And Sahih Muslim, according to the Ummah. But hang on, those two persons, may Allah bless them, inshallah, and they be being pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his Jannah. Both of them, they never said that the sound hadith is only or are only in our books. They never said that. They never said that all the hadith in my book are in following, are in the classification in what we called before a while mutawatir. They never said that. They never said that our book is equal to our Quran. So whenever you read anything there, you take it and don't ask about it. No. They said we tried our best to make sure that those hadith are sound. Sahih. Both set conditions. By the way, the conditions of Al-Bukhari different from the conditions of Muslim. Uh, I remember last week you said that there is one hadith that, uh, that Muhammad was in Muallak, the yes. But you mentioned why he put it in the Sahih Bukhari. I said it, but I repeat it again. Uh -huh. The thing now coming, going to Al-Bukhari, so he set conditions, and Imam Muslim set different conditions. Why I'm saying this information? It is to say, although the, their books, both books, consider Sahih, although both of them build upon different methodology, no, the same methodology, but different conditions. The meaning, what being Sahih according to a Muslim, wasn't Sahih, perfect Sahih, not to say something different, perfect Sahih, to Al-Bukhari and the other way around. This is why we have some hadith in Sahih Muslim not mentioned in Sahih Bukhari and the other way around. That doesn't make Sahih Bukhari lesser or make Sahih Muslim lesser. Both are acceptable by the Ummah as a whole. But when it comes to details, now, going back again, the title of Sahih al-Bukhari, it is to say, Al-Musnad al-Jami'u li Sahih ayyami al-Nabi wa aqwalihi wa af'alihi wa ayyamihi. Again, he said, Al-Sahih al-Jami'u al-Musnad, which being, Musnad means related perfectly without any shortage to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when we come to his book, we can see easily, and we have to remind you, they both wrote their books between the third and the fourth century of Al Hijrah. Actually, even when you come talking about Al Bukhari, Rahimahullah, he been writing this actually in the late second century and beginning of the third century. Okay? With Al Imam Muslim, to remind you, Al Imam Muslim, he been one of the disciples of Al Imam al Bukhari, one of his students. So, their ideas being interrelated. Okay? Although they never agree upon everything exactly, upon every single hadith. Okay? So this won't amount to, to say that we have some hadith in Al-Bukhari which is very weak when it comes to transmission. Again, to remind you, when it comes transmit, as transmi transmitted perfectly, which we call Musnad. Musnad means transmitted perfectly.
Here I have to say that the title of Al-Bukhari, it was clear enough to draw our attention to say clearly that not every single hadith in my book should be classified as perfectly sound. It may be lesser than Sahih. It may even not be judged yet perfectly. This is where we have this hadith which we mentioned last time about the music, al muallaqat Those muallaqat means that some hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari is not, you, you look at this. Now, the last thing should be the perfect. And here will be the author of the book, al-Bukhari, right? Mm -hmm. So here we have al-Bukhari, okay? Uh, yes. Now, by doing that, I have to put this. Now, al-Bukhari, this is the meaning of al-Mu'allaq. Again, hand, just like being hand. He is not up in the sky and not down on the floor, you know, on the ground. The thing now, this is Mu'allaq. Can you see this? So we may have two links or three, three links or even more are not mentioned. So the thing, he will say, Qala, anna nabiya qal. So the thing, what he has done, that he omitted all those things. So whenever we see like this, means means Yes. Okay. So the minute he, you say, you know, you see him saying that certain imam, who is not a companion, mm -hmm. said, the prophet said, you know, clearly, that mm -hmm. there is something missing. But you won't be able really to figure this out unless you have certain knowledge about who is the companion and who is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is important. Okay, so this is complicated, yeah? Mm -hmm. How can I figure out as an ordinary Muslim? Okay, uh, there's one, it's one comment about it. It says that <coughs> uh, this person, one of the chain, this person is not known. Yeah. So it's not? Not well known. Yes, not well known. So not again, well known. So it is just like missing. It's considered missing or something? Exactly. So if I know just your name, but I know nothing about you. I don't know if you trust me. So how can I trust you? You see? When it comes to, to piece of knowledge, and now we are talking about our deen. How, how do you know it? How do the ulama know it's okay? This one yes. is not known. Oh, okay. Known. You insist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> again. We said that they set certain conditions, okay? So we need history. Mm -hmm. So there is a certain history which is very specific. We call it Aymurijal, the history of men. Of mm -hmm. course, we are generalizing men again in Arabic, but not to say that women are not included, they are. Mm -hmm. it's like saying so in those books, exactly, Aymurijal, which to mean people, but because in general, most later in general, being men, come on, we have Aisha, <laughs> one third of Sunnah being narrated by Aisha. So women being there. Okay? But the thing to generalize, it is just to generalize, but women again, they are included. Now, this, this is one of the conditions. So this condition. Under the umbrella of the science, see, it's a science. The science of Ilm al Rijal, the science of men. The meaning, the science of the history of men. Talking about personal and the exact personality of each of them. This is why those ulama who've been working in this history, there's a, a book to Al Bukhari which is titled by the history Tariq al-Rijal, Tariq al-Bukhari, okay? So, what is the field of this? Again, reading the life of those people whom we have to judge before even taking, taking a piece of word 
to add to our religion. So it is a very specific science. And it is about what? It is about knowing the name. The whole name. Mm -hmm. his, that his father and the father of his father, just to make sure about the family tree. Mm -hmm. And then, when he been no, not where he, he has he have been, has been. No, it is when the date of his birth. You know, the date of birth. Almost sometimes, because we are not sure. The Arab in general, they never, never count on time. Alhamdulillah. When Islam comes, Islam show, you know, shows them that the time is important. You know. They keep saying, we done this when it was snowing. <laughs> yeah, my mother-in-law will say, Islam was born, what does it do? Yes, yeah. well, Olive being here, yeah, when we have <laughs> those what day. olive trees, oh. yes. What day, Olive? Yeah. No, oh. subhanAllah, not oh. And oh. we done oh. this when oh. we have uh, Fulana, some girl, they mentioned some girl, she uh, delivered her child, mashallah. When this happened? <laughs> we don't know. Even till now, yeah. till now, they, whoa, he passed away when it was snowing heavy. <laughs> okay. Sometimes in uh, 1988, I think, it's been snowing heavily for seven days in Jordan. If you remember that, I don't know if you live in that. It, it was wasn't 88 days after that. Yeah, it was, was, yeah, it was beautiful. You know, <laughs> occasion for us here in Jordan, which we are really missing a lot. But the thing again, just to say you don't, but I do. The thing that keeping saying that this happened when it was snowing heavily, or when some kind of war being there, uh, mm -hmm. someone he has a daughter, someone it was his wedding, okay, when? Mm -hmm. So when Islam came, and when it came to science of hadith, there was a big fuss about it that you have to make sure if I meet, if I be a narrator, that I meet the one who is on the top of me. Mm -hmm. So the second thing that we'll ask about, did I go, get out from my country? In any occasion, to be able to see someone from Baghdad, to be able to, to, you know, to have to pass some information from his mouth. How could I mention someone who lives in Baghdad that he told me something, he has told me something, why I never met him. This is important. Or I've been uh, living that time, and the difference between he, him passing away, and uh, you know, it was his dead time, and my time study, you know, studying this science, in between 10 years. So I never heard from him anything, okay? So even, perhaps, will be the same generation, but different countries. Okay, perhaps I'll be in the same country, but I never attend one of his classes. So those very specific information, it is to give us extra information, whether we trust this person or not. Now coming to the other part of this information, the other part of his personality, which is his memory. Was he a good one or not? This is important, which you call it Adala. And the other one, now it is about his memory. So we know his history, personal history. Now we should know some information about his, um, his morals, you know, the way he been living his life, his character. Did he lie ever? This is important. And the last thing, it is to to make sure about his memory, what kind of person he was. Perhaps he was the one who depend on books, on writing. So the minute he is narrates something without his papers, so I can't trust him. Perhaps I know that in certain minute, you know, certain um, period of his uh, life, that he been facing Alzheimer, you know. And we had this with certain ulama. But of course we never know that it means a oh. the, the thing that we say uh, certain words, we say 
تغیر بی آخره. That he changed late in his time. Living. This is exactly the Heimer. Because he's been changing his memory, he can't remember things. Or he been shocked. And after that incident, anything coming out of his mouth, don't lie about it. Some alim, he been in, in his house, and what happened, there was a fire in his house. So his house been sitting fair. So all his work, all his papers, gone away, gone with the wind, okay? And again, another alim, his papers gone, really gone with the wind, literally. So after that, any information coming from him is not related. Some alim, he will be very merit when he is in Egypt, and he is not reliable when he went to Baghdad. Because he been no, moving, was... because he been under under some pressure there. Mm -hmm. oh. And also language, just even the difference in the slang from one country to another. Now coming to the language, <laughs> someone like Alim, who is Sufyan Athawi. Now we are going deep, really, we are digging deep in his character. Yeah. Yeah. This Alim, Sufyan Athawi, he had been working in some period of his time in politics. And he knows that if he mentioned certain people in his, you know, chain, that he will be targeted by the state. So he, whenever he say an, we know there was someone is missing. Just by saying an, by going deep in this, we know he never say an unless there is someone is missing. So how could we figure all this out? All these are written in those books, the history of men, Ilm al-Rijal, the science of the history of men. And to follow that, okay? After doing that, what we are doing is to take this and to compare with the different roots of the same information. So remember, those chains will turn to be roots the same information. So what we are doing, that really, we are drawing a tree. And this is the text, what the Prophet said, which we call al -Matna. Okay? Now, to reach this, which is the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, in this case, we are going to those roots. Believe me, the way we are judging this hadith, that we have to look for all those roots and then to judge every single one separately. After doing that, compare between those to say as a whole now, if this hadith as a whole uh, is sound or not. So it may happen to me that one of those roots are weak, but the rest are sound. So in this case, I say this hadith, this saying of the Prophet Muhammad is sound from those roots and weak only from this root. But it won't amount to say that this hadith is weak because we know that 80% of those roots to witness that this hadith is right. It will be really related to the Prophet Muhammad So the thing that we, we judge each root individually, separately. And then to come out as a total, you know, just like counting and adding, you know, those mathematical um, procedures? We are doing the same thing. Exactly. So we are doing the same. So we have the judgment which is in total as a whole and we have this individual judgment. So to say any hadith is weak or sound, it is not just like, uh, sorry for that, just like to dip, you know, just to put your bread in dipping, that's it. It 
it is not as simple as that. By doing that, it is your deed. So you have to work upon it. You have to work hard to come out with results. This is why we rely upon Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. But again, to remind myself and to remind you all, by relying upon it, we are not saying it is infallible. This will keep keep percentage of one one percentage one by one from one hundred that we may get ten five perhaps twenty hadith perhaps up to one hundred because we are talking about ten thousand hadith so this one percentage will count so how can be relieved I don't know, again, this is a very important question as ordinary Muslim. We all ask, how can I know? How could I know? I'm just reading in this room and in this room. This is hadith, this is hadith. And sometimes they add some classification and sometimes nothing at all. How can I rely about it? Uh, this week, um, a young sister, she uh, circulate this hadith in Facebook. It is a lovely hadith. Again, to say it is hadith, I, I, I'm not precise in this. Okay? So she mentioned this information and it is from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. She said that the Prophet, he used to ask Aisha, his wife, how is your love to me today? She'll answer every time that it is just like a nut, you know, it's been firm, you know, and, um, never change, this is the meaning. And he will laugh, and she will laugh, beautiful, very emotional, nice. Actually, we women, we are desperate to something <laughs> like this, <laughs> we are, but should not be blind by that. Not to, because this is Deen again. So when I saw this hadith, well, I don't know about it, and no one should claim that I know all those hadith. The minute you say I know, you don't know anything. <laughs> really. So I've been researching. Not found even a chain. There is no chain at all. Not, there is no chain, the meaning, there is no hadith not be mentioned. And this will help you not to be mentioned in the first three centuries. It is to say, it is in clear cut with the Prophet Muhammad There should be something to say, you know, someone to mention it. But to say in three centuries and none of Muslims mention it, come on. So, I sent her anyway to say, I check this hadith, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Would you please tell me what is your source? I won't say to her that you done such and such, I can't say that. Because you don't know about the intention. Later on, the very same day, I received an email coming from her to say, I'm sorry, and uh, I'm happy you, you draw my attention to that. Actually, there is no source. Mm -hmm. But because, again, I've been fond of this hadith, this information, and I took it, I'm going to fly with it. You can't do that. This is your deen. Okay? So this is important. Another example, just to mention it, to mention it, we are in this what is so called Arab Spring. There is some hadith being circulating all the time. It is to say that the judgment day, this is the signs of the judgment day, that seven states of Arab world will collapse. I think you are, I think you, you saw this one. It has no chain at all. Actually, when we had this Saddam Hussein period of time, and when he conquered 
the Americans has been told to us and Kuwait. Some people, really, they mentioned that you will be able to see as a hadith, to see Saddam Hussein face on the moon. <laughs> Honest. And some people claim that they did. <laughs> You know, this area is a very horrific area because people will, you know, if they are fond of some thoughts and ideas and some beliefs and they want to, again, to go and to market it. Uh, another hadith, remember when we being really, it was really boiling hot. <laughs> remember that space of time here in, here in Jordan in summertime? It will be really boiling hot. The people again circulated on Facebook that this is hadith said by the Prophet that Allah telling Jahannam, telling the hellfire that the one, the minute I'll send this heart to the earth and people started, you know, their supplication to me, I'll guarantee to them the Jannah, the heaven, to be inhabitants of heaven. Just you been there and you been in that area and it is boiling hot, it is a guarantee that you you'll be patient, don't so don't buy a condition, <laughs> don't you know, stay home. So, so again I'm, oh, this is cool. You know? I think the first thing is if it doesn't make sense, you should yeah. stop and think, maybe it's wrong. <laughs> That's the first well, thing. People, they no, don't follow their them. instinct much when it comes to sense area. They, be, you know, they follow their hearts and what they are fond of. So again, this is fabricated. It's been fabricated. But again, because they are fond of, they started circulating it. Yes. On the subject too, I was told, I won't say by whom, that there is like a scholarly consensus that if there is a Hadith, it doesn't have any transmission, reliable transmission, but it is not in contradiction with the behavior of the prophets, although I was not, um, that it is acceptable. If it's something nice and sweet like Aisha said to her, you know, her feelings for him are like a knot. Oh, this is nice, it sounds like Muhammad, no problem. So, but we can't just accept it blindly like, okay, no problem. No, we can't. It's, you know, just... it's very nice, and yes, it does sound like our prophet, but... Again, you know, we, we have to be careful, as you're saying, with these things. Well, I'm giving you can't just some say, okay, example fine. here. <laughs> Does it kind of contradict you, for Adam and him? Yes, so. if you go to a doctor, and he gave you certain medicine, which suits you perfectly, and you took it immediately from the doctor. Good. And he said to you, this is what is going to heal you. Mm -hmm. to give you the cure you want. So sound transmission, I'm sure from where I get the information. Mm -hmm. So this will be the cure, the cure for sure. Okay, I'll take it home. Reaching my home, one of my neighbors, she will say to me, take this medicine. I'll try it, it's good. Or uh, it's been described to me by someone whom even she can't remember his name. Okay, would you leave what being described to you by the doctor that or whom you trust and to take that medicine which may which may help, you know, it may be a killer. <laughs> yes, it may help. Because it is a painkiller, not because it is a cure or because I trust my neighbor. Come on, she is not a specialist in this field. How can you trust her? Okay, what if you take this medicine and then you have those side effects, you know, coming to you quickly and certain tummy problem, and, uh, all these things. What we <coughs> Now, all, even if being, you know, a relief to you in certain points, it is not the medicine. Why should you need it? It is just like, again, you have two eyes, which are very healthy, and to say, I need extra glasses. For what? To help me in seeing things. But you don't have any problem. 
So you don't need anything in addition to help you to fulfill this target. Okay, now yeah, I can rely on one week hadith and this will strengthen my iman. Come on, it is just like to say that I have a healthy person who has two legs, two feet, and he is walking in a healthy way and to say to him, you need some, you know, what you call? Cane. Yeah, Cane. just Cane. to rely upon. I don't need it. If I do it, I'll be just like making fun of myself, you know? Okay, to say that I'm a healthy person, but I need someone who is paralyzed to help me in walking. <laughs> So if you have a healthy hadith, sound hadith, you don't need you know, a weak hadith to strengthen yourself. You see, I think the common sense is not working in this area <laughs> to many people. Again, it is just to say that we have some you know, shortage in our deen and I need human effort to, to strengthen it. Fabricated hadith to make it work. No, you don't. This is why we have some guy. Uh, he been his name is Nuh ibn Abi Maryam. Nuh ibn Abi Maryam. Okay. This Nuh, what he has done? Again, this is the area. His name is Nuh. Okay. I think we can do it. Oh no! Tell me this question. Again, this is again your life question. <laughs> Did the Prophet said it? Okay? This Nuh, his name is again Nuh ibn Abi Maryam. This Nuh been in a visit to the Khalifa, the, to the Abbasi Khalifa at that time. Okay? This Khalifa Abbas is his name Al Ma'mun. He is well known Khalifa in Abbasi period. What happened? This Nuh ibn Abi Mayan, he was fond, really, very much stick to Al Quran. He, you know, he been all the time. He has been keeping Al Quran, you know, reading Al Quran all the time. He has been very much a good person, very nice one, okay. And he looked around him, then he visited the Khalifa. The minute he visited the Khalifa, he narrated and he said, that the Prophet and he mentioned many hadith, which is the outcome of all these hadith that the merit of reading this verse and this verse and this verse and he was talking about a nice, not only nice, um, a very glory position in heaven talking about gold and necklace and being in palaces and having water around you, uh, everything. Nice women, beautiful women, many things. Talking about 100, 100, 100, not only 1 million, 100 million of number that you not even, you won't be even able to say that those will be the rewards of the one who reads such and such and such verses of Al-Qur'an, which we call the merit of reading chapters or verses in Al-Qur'an, which we call Fada'il Al-Qur'an. So those narrations in Fada'il Al-Qur'an mostly came out from this person, Nuh ibn Abi Maryam. So the Khalifa al Ma'mun, he said to him, after he finished all that, the Khalifa said to him, O oh, Nuh ibn Abi Maryam, you know perfectly that the Prophet never said that. In his face, he said that. 
the Khalifa knew that. He said to him again, you know, you, you know, Ibn Maryam, you know perfectly that the Prophet never, ever said those narrations, never said such and such. So, what did Nuh answer? He said, O oh, Khalifa of the believers, I looked around and I saw people busy in politics, busy and you know, marching and going to markets. And they are not looking perfectly as they should to Al-Quran. So I said, I'm going to lie for, to lie for the behalf of the Prophet, to the behalf of our deen, to the behalf of our Quran, to bring people back again to Al-Quran. So he said, I never lie about the Prophet. I lied for him. So the intention is good. You know? He was a good Muslim. He's a he being a very good believer. But I think the target, to reach the target, although it's a good intention there, he caused a huge damage mm. in the prophetic transmission to those narration when it comes to the merits of the Quran. Mm. So in general, sister, those narrations in the beginning of tafsirs in general, this area is weak, mostly. And I'm referring now to Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Three areas, actually four areas, you'll find many fabricated hadith and many weak hadith in those areas, which are al-fitan, the signs of the judgment day. And I'm not, when I'm talking about, talking about signs, I'm talking about incidents, which we call al-fitan. Those huge and grave incidents, we call al-fitan. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the second area is the merits of the Quran. The third area, the merits of certain people. Or, the other way around, some text against those people. The fourth one is politics. Hmm. politics. Politics. You have to see that politics, it is about places and persons. To say something good about, for example, Ali ibn Abi Talib or against Muawiyah because it's been very political period of time mm -hmm. in yeah. Muslims' history. It was a grave incident there, where Khalifa been killed upon that, and Khalifa Muhammad Khattab been assassinated. What about the, the food that the Prophet ate? The food that the Prophet used to eat? The... Okay, now coming to the merits or to things that being narrated. Again, we have many areas. I'm not limiting to this area. I'm being related to Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He said that. But I can add that you may find fabricated hadith in women area. <laughs> in women area. And we mentioned this several times. When, when a man looked around him, oh, mashallah, Muslim women, they are getting even stronger. So I need to weaken them down, to slow them down, to make sure that men can live. <laughs> he has some illness in his heart. So immediately he said, any woman will divorce herself, which we call khula, release or dissolve her marriage contract, which is khula. Al-Muqtari'atuhunna-Zaniyat. They are the adulteries. So the minute any Muslim woman, pious one, hears that, she will refrain even from asking. Right? Although, this is a fabricated hadith. So again, all this introduction to say, we need, as a Muslim woman, 
to educate ourselves more. But again, I didn't, I didn't even answer the question. How, how can we know to figure out that this hadith, although I'm not working in this science, I don't have a clue how this works. How could I say or have even some feeling to be numb, to feel numb? about certain hadith, to, to feel a bit fishy about some hadith. Well, in this case, there is a rule, which is, very simple one. It works with all of us, even if you are not Muslim. Well, to this level, yes. It is a fact. Our Islam never been in contrast with sound reason, which is, we call it Al-Aql Sahih. And of course, this is the word of Ibn Taymiyyah. May Allah be pleased with him, Al-Aql Sahih. You notice. I'm referring to Ibn Taymiyyah, who is the most and the most prominent figure to our philo and philo-Muslims. Okay? So he said that our deen never been in contrast with sound reason, al-aql sahih Okay? This is and he adds that you have to be sure, which we've been explained already, and naqlu sahih That to make sure that it's been transmitted to us in a sound way. And naqlu sahih Now this is the first one coming from Ibn Taymiyyah. The second one which being agreed upon by all Muslims over the time, that the most important objectives of Sharia, it is justice. So Islam, even then, yeah, thank you. So Islam never have, has never been in contrast with justice. So if you see, just by reading, that the justice figure is not implemented perfectly. You go, this is to say, this is the rule. It will be just like alerting you. This rule, it is to say, you'll be alert. There is something wrong here. Although you know nothing. Okay? I think this is where we feel a lot of the hadith about women. There is injustice in that hadith, and this is what strikes exactly. the court of us as cannot injustice, be Injustice, or it is in contrast with common sense, which uh -huh. is sound reason. sound reason. This is important, sister, and I think you've been overloaded today. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to but stop it, it here. Important to establish this. So this is the important. introduction uh -huh. for hadith, how to treat our hadith. Mm -hmm. Next time, our classes will be about reading hadith related to women from Sahih al-Bukhari. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure that we are safe in the safe area, which is hadith in you know, Sahih in general. Mm -hmm. Okay? See you then. SubhanAllah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>